I am excited. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, I thank you for this time in your word. I thank you for your counsel. Speak to us, educators, us, instruct us, and that we may, at the end of this, manifest you, which is our ultimate goal. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm still on the whole concept. We're still on the whole concept of the sacrifice of the cross and the benefits of the cross. But today, I want to take a leap from what we dealt with yesterday. Yesterday, we focused on how to deal with a performance-based Christianity. We, we try to address that. And we try to see how that is not what God wants for us. That is not why Jesus died. He did not die for us to earn his love, for us to earn his benefits. And we, we try to examine how to come to a place where whether you are praying, whether you are fasting, whether you are, you are reading the word, whether you are serving or not, we try to come to a place where we, we reorient our minds or see how to reorient our minds so that we are not trying to offer God a sacrifice for his blessing. Because your sacrifice for God's blessing is as filthy rags. There is no blessing, there is no sacrifice you can offer uh, that will qualify you for the blessing of God. And so, uh, the sac but there are sacrifices we should offer. But the sacrifices we offer, we offer them and we ought to offer them from a place of love. Because we have encountered the love of God, it causes us to out of joy. And I'm serious. If you don't feel joy in serving, you don't feel joy in giving, I, I'm almost tempted to say don't even do it. Because it will break your heart. Whenever a person begins to serve, whenever a person begins to give, whenever a person, whenever you are in a relationship where it feels as if you are being intimidated to do it, you are being compelled to do it, after a while, you will inevitably rebel. And even if you don't rebel and you keep doing it, you will find that you are operating in resentment. You will find that you are operating in bitterness. But generally speaking, at some point, people rebel. Have you seen marriages? And, and because of what I do with couples, unfortunately, we face situations like this. I see marriages where people have been married for 25 years, 30 years, and then they hit the 25th year and they're having a divorce. And, and you ask them what's going on and they tell you, no, our marriage ended years ago. Why did they stay together? They stayed together probably because of the kids. They stayed together because of financial reasons. The minute the, the external pressure was taken away from them, the external reason was taken away from them, their internal reason for staying was put on the table. And, and there was none. There was nothing left. Because every time we, we engage, not from a place of genuine peace, not from a place of proper encounter, and whether with God or with the individuals that we're working with or, or, or we're in a relationship with, we tend to get bitter. But that's not really what I want to focus. I want to read something to us here. Uh, I hope I can find it. I want to read something to us here this morning um, about the whole concept of becoming who you are supposed to be. I'm struggling now to find my, my notes. Uh, sorry, let me do this again. The whole concept of becoming who you are supposed to be, who you were meant to be. Sorry, let me see if I can quickly find it. Something just happened now. My notes just vanished on me. Okay, there we go. The lot I should put on the table, the whole, the idea of self-editing and finding your authentic self. If you don't find your authentic, your authentic self, and what do I mean your authentic self? Who you really are. I'm not just talking about... Um, who you really are with respect to reflecting God. That is the baseline for every human being, not just for every believer. Every human being is supposed to reflect God. That is our baseline. But when I say your authentic self, I'm talking about where you really, you have come to terms with your personality, with your personhood, with your assignment, such that, and, and the, the joy of it is, when you find your authentic self, you are actually in a better position to bring authenticity out of yourself into the world. You get more creative. You are actually able to become more creative. You are actually able to be a lot more at peace. You know who you need in your life and who you do not. When people do things against you or for you, they don't, they don't, they don't sway you off your path. They don't encourage you beyond your, your, your intentions or your abilities because you are now at peace. And every human being, if you have not found your authentic self, 
yourself. That sense of I'm not enough, that sense of I need to be doing more, that sense of what is missing in my life is generally because, particularly if you are born again and you are still experiencing that sense of what is missing in my life, something is not there. I know I'm married and I, I have you know uh, love coming from there. I have kids, my kids are fine, but there is something missing. That sense of that is the dichotomy or the distance between where you are and your true authentic self. Let me read a few things. Let me read a few things to us. The, the thought that you are your own person is really an illusion. Listen to me. The thought that you are your own person is really an illusion. The, social, the sociologist Cooley says, I am not who I think I am, neither am I who you think I am, but I am who I think you think I am. I know that sounds confusing, but it has actually been proven to be so. Maybe you rewind this to hear me say it again. We take, for example, you decide to go somewhere. Why? Because other people are going. Or you decide not to go somewhere uh, because everybody else is going. Either way, whether you chose to go or not, a lot of times, if you're not careful, it is still tied to what people think, to what the consensus has agreed upon, to what the collective uh, um, have come to agree, you know? We think of how we look, for example, we think of how we look and what we think it says to those that will observe us and then edit it to say what we think they will think when they see us. Did you hear that? And we all do that. Before I dressed up today, I was thinking, so how would this look on camera? Yesterday looked a bit dark. Um, I need to ensure that whatever I wear is brighter. There is an inevitably um, bias towards how will you be viewed? What will people think? How will people receive you? And if we are not careful, that begins to define the things that we do and almost define everything that we do. Where we take the things that should matter um, and, and with respect to what people think. And we even allow it to begin to matter in the things that it should not matter. Did you get that? We take the things that should matter with respect to what people think about you. And unfortunately, because it becomes a habit where we're always factoring what this person wants, what this person thinks, we now even allow what people think or individuals think to even matter in the areas that it should not matter. Let's continue. Um... Um, who we are deeply versus who we think we are versus who we think others think we are can be so confusing, but the truth is it doesn't have to be. To the believer, you are the following, and you need to know this. You need to know that you are this even before you begin to try and examine your true identity. You need to know that the manufacturer, your creator, already defined certain things as your parameters, and every other thing draws from these parameters. Let me say this. To the believer, you are the following. You are unconditionally loved. You are the righteousness of God. You are baptized into Christ. You are filled with Christ. In Christ you live, you move, and you have your being. You and the Father are one. All that Christ is, you are. All that Christ has, you have. You are both the literal and mystical body of Christ. You are a very big deal. Before you do anything, before you've accomplished anything, before anybody gives you an applause, you are a very big deal. See yourself through the eyes of God today. Confront your mind with the above truths concerning who, who God already says that you are, um, of who you really are from God's perspective, and watch a peace flood your soul. Listen, I am tired of people's changing opinions. This is me speaking for myself. I'm tired of people's changing opinions, and I have found solace in God's constant and empowering truth of who I really am. You need to find rest in the same. Find rest knowing even if people don't like or accept you, you are liked, you are loved, and you are valued by the one true and most valuable being, God himself. Find rest in that or this world might end up breaking you. There is power in knowing and believing and in choosing God's unchanging opinion about you now why this is important now people can take this the wrong way people can begin to think okay this means i shouldn't care what anybody says you have misbehaved and and and, and people are responding to your misbehavior and you listen to what i'm saying now you say that is their own opinion no 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 it doesn't apply there you messed up there you need to own your foolishness but let me say this the primary way to find your authentic self the primary way to come to the place where you discover 
um, who you really are. And you've heard me say this before. It's to become free from two things. It's to become free from needing things and it's to become free from needing people. You see, if you're in a relationship and you need your spouse and you can't survive without your spouse, some of you might think that's great. That's not great. That's a risk. The kind of pressure you will put on your spouse to make you happy, the kind of pressure you will put on your spouse and responsibility to do everything right as you want it. Nobody can meet those standards. When you need people and not a case of you know what you need, you are, you are engaged in, in pulling into your life what you need and so people come alongside to work with you and you bring them alongside to on your journey towards what you need and so your dependence is not on them. You have gotten your source of dependence from somewhere else. You have gotten your source of confidence from somewhere else. It is not tied to your clothes. It's not tied to your house. It's not tied to where you live. It's not tied to the car you drive. It's not tied to the people you associate with. It's not tied to your company. When, when you are free from people and you are free from things, then you begin to discover your authentic self. Oh my goodness, it is unbelievable what begins to happen. The reason why we struggle, the reason why mankind makes decisions generally based on the consensus. You think you are an individual. We make decisions based on the consensus a lot of times. One of the key reasons why we generally do that, and it takes a journey to break away from that, is because from the day you and I were born, whether you, be, whether you it, was, it was intended or not, everybody has experienced what is called conditional love. Conditional love. Your parents showed you conditional love even if you had the best parents because they also received conditional love. You say, how did they show me conditional love? Come on. When you did well in school, if you grew up in my kind of home, when you did well in school, you got certain rewards. When you did wrong, you got certain spankings. They showed you conditional love. Then you say, but was that conditional? Wasn't that to motivate? I agree. In, the, in all our best interests as parents, we do our best not to show our biases. We do our best not to show our preferences. We really should be doing our best to do that. But unfortunately, we all fall short. Because to show unconditional love means that you have come to a place where you are no longer moved by what you receive or what you don't receive. You are, you are divorced from a person's activity, you are divorced from a person's emotions, you are divorced from a person's love or criticism, you are completely divorced. And because you are divorced from it, you are able to maintain a principled approach, irrespective of the circumstances around you, irrespective of the people around you. And so your life is now based on principle, in, and, and not in, in anymore on the circumstances around you or the policies that are around you. When you hit that place where you have brought your body under subjection because, oh, for those of you on the master class with me tonight, you're about to be hit with a bomb because your body is your subconscious mind. I don't have time to explain that. When you are able to divorce yourself from that, it's amazing what the universe begins to reorchestrate to bring to you. Because God has set it as a universal law. When you are free, when you are free from the desires, your own desires to have, I'm serious. When you are free from your desire to have things, when you are free from the pressure of people to, to, to compare yourself with where you are, what you have, what you've not accomplished, when you are free from that, you suddenly begin to really discover what you really like. I had a conversation with my son about two or three days ago, and I was saying to him, why is diamond expensive? Why is diamond expensive? My son immediately said, it's because everybody, they've, they've been able to help us see that it is valuable. I said, is it valuable in itself? He said, no. It is a piece of rock that, that came from carbon. That it's all, and I was so impressed and so grateful. Now, whether he fully understood what he was saying is another ball game. But there is nothing that has value in itself except for the value you give it. Let me say it again. Nothing has value in itself except for the value you give it. There is no outfit. It does not matter the designer that is valuable, that, that, that is worth, the, there is no bag that is worth 300,000 rand. Don't get me wrong. 
You can buy a bag for 100,000 rand if you can afford it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. I pray that you will be able to afford a bag of 300,000 rand. But listen, that bag of 300,000 rand is the same, will carry the same thing as your 500 rand bag. It will carry the same thing. It might even last as long. It might not even be as durable. It might not even be because it's delicate. It's made from delicate things. It's made from blah, blah, blah. And so you have to treat it in a particular way. You have to uh, store it. You can't store it in, 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 in wooden areas. You need to store it in padded area, blah, blah. Why is it that expensive? It's not that expensive a lot of times because in itself, it is that expensive. It's that expensive because of a brand that has been slapped on it and the collective who has viewed it as valuable and so you buy it so that the collective sees you in a particular light it's time to be free from the collective god is saying he wants you to come to a place where your sense of self-worth is born from receiving unconditional love unconditional love brings healing to your soul I wish I could say this. God said to, my, to me today, he said, let them see that it's time to stop self-editing according to the patterns of men. To stop self-editing according to the goals of men. You say, no, they're according to my own goals. Reveal your own goals. Why do you have those goals? Are they because of what you really want or because of what men have defined as success? So this is what men have defined as success. And so you, based on that definition of success, you have developed a whole pursuit. You have developed a whole um, 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 target that you are heading towards because of what others have defined as success and you have imbibed thinking it was your own thought. Now, it's time to stop self-editing based on other people's definition of what success is. And it's time to receive deep healing. Because it's only when you receive deep healing that your authentic self will begin to rise. How do we receive this? Lerata said, my sense of self-worth is based on God's unconditional love for me. That is what it's supposed to be. Unconditional love begins to say to you, and only God can give it. We try, we try, but it's difficult. It's difficult to show unconditional love because unconditional love means that you are okay when it's not being reciprocated. Unconditional love means that you are fine when, when you are taken for granted. It is difficult for man to continuously do that. And unfortunately, because we struggle to do that, when people violate our trust, when people cross the line and we and we have to edit them out of our space and of necessary and, and of necess uh, of necessity do so we and, and uh, we put them in a quandary because what if those those mistakes they made was because they were finding their footing but you can't allow yourself to be taken advantage of indefinitely while somebody is finding their footing but because we have to protect ourselves we then cause them to begin to we we our disconnection from them might now hurt them and so they now battle them and, and need healing themselves and and i totally get that the only way out of it is not to look for unconditional love from men it's a difficult thing even you don't succeed at it we are getting better but we struggle at it it is to receive it from god when you spend time i want to read something someone sent to me yesterday as well um I want to read something. After yesterday's session, uh, when I told you what to do concerning receiving unconditional love, concerning allowing God to love you. If you missed yesterday, go and watch it. The recording is a bit poor. It's on my Facebook page. Go and watch it. But concerning, I explained yesterday about how to settle down and allow God love you. God said to me today again, tell my people every day they should let me love them. I told you yesterday, you were not created to worship. You were not created to rise to the top of the mountain. You were not created to, to, to do any of those things. Those things are secondary. Man was not created to worship God. Man was created to receive the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. Man was created to receive the love of God. It is when he receives the love of God that he is suddenly able to love as well. It's when he receives the love of God that... Because he has received the love of God, guess what? 
Fear, unconditional love, right? Removes fear. Do you know what happens to your world when fear, deep-rooted fear? Have you been there before? You are, you are, you can't sleep at night, you are anxious, but in your mind, you can't even think about what you are anxious about, or you are having panic attacks, you're struggling to breathe. You go and have yourself checked. The doctor says it's a panic attack, and you are thinking, panic attack. But I am okay. You don't get it. Your body is the expression of your subconscious mind. Your body has received the fear. Your body has received the, uh, the anxiety. It's in your subconscious. So even though your conscious mind is not experiencing it, because that's what is in your amygdala, it's what is in your subconscious. And what your body has received, your body is telling you there is something deep-rooted. The only way out of that is unconditional love is when you realize that the God of all the universe thinks you are the best thing after sliced bread, irrespective of your mistakes, irrespective of your flaws, your carelessness, when you, when you receive that on a daily, your confidence rises. You no longer benchmark your pursuits against men's expectations. No, you no longer do that. You benchmark it against, and it comes, your benchmark comes from within. It comes from discovering that this is who I am. This is who I've been created and called to be. When, when everybody turns their back on you, it doesn't break you down anymore because your support and your lifeline was no longer coming from your circumstances. Guess what will happen? Your work will change. Your work ethic will change. Your ability, you, you will love more than you've ever loved before. It will be strange. It will think that because you are free from people, you will no longer care what people think. And because you don't care what people think, you will begin to misbehave towards people. No, it doesn't work like that. Because you no longer care what people think, and it's not coming from a place of pain, because the people say, I don't care what people think, but it's coming from a place of pain because they've suffered abuse. But you are saying, I don't care what people think because God has loved me and made me great. Guess what? Guess what? You will suddenly begin to love like God loves. You will suddenly begin to see men. When I say men, I speak generically, men and women. You will be suddenly begin to see men as God sees men. Because you have received love, you will find yourself overflowing in it. Unconditional love removes fear. Imagine what will happen if you were never afraid. The doors you will knock on. The opportunities you will explore. The options the universe will suddenly bring to you. Because fear stops certain options from being tabled. It's not being tabled at all. Because you give out an aura that makes it clear that even if it's tabled, you will not take it. When unconditional love, when you receive the love of God, it breaks, boom, the backbone of internalized fear, which we all have. When you receive unconditional love, you suddenly begin to release faith because it gives you, it restores your confidence. And it gives you a confidence that doesn't come from around you. It gives you a confidence that comes from knowing that you are accepted just by being who you are. Have you seen people who walk into a room and it looks like they fill the room? And you wonder who, why, how? It's simply because they have built a confidence level that is, that is, that transcends the environment they currently are in. When we build ours the right way, when we build it from God's perspective, from the grace of God, when we build it by spending time on, um, in, uh, and receiving God's unconditional love, your authentic self begins to manifest. Let me read what someone wrote yesterday when the person started doing what I shared with you yesterday as I begin to close. The person said, good afternoon. Thank you for the devotion this morning. This was yesterday. Mindfulness and focusing on God's love. I practiced the focusing on God's love, um, the focusing part earlier today. I played some Gregorian chants, instrumentals, and just kept saying it over and over again. The feeling was sublime. There was a part where I felt as though an angel wrapped his wings around me. The feeling was awesome. Ephesians 3, 17 to 18 came to mind. 
that me, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend the height, depth, length, and breadth. I just want to say a big thank you, sir. These devotions you do, I imagine the sacrifice and preparations that go, and then he goes on to give a praise. Thank you so much for the praise. I said to him, this was my reply, I said, wow, what an experience. I expected it though, but it's always a wow. Imagine this happening daily, even if it's just for a few minutes. Sometimes it, you, it will feel this intense, sometimes maybe not as intense, but every time there will be an impact deep in your subconscious, particularly if you let yourself feel it. His love changes us. Imagine every day, like when we are done now, you take the next 10 minutes and allow God to love you. I want to read a scripture to you. And this is our scripture for today, Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. I'm reading it from the Passion Translation. Get the Passion Translation and read this verse. It says, Be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your Father as his beloved sons and daughters. And continue, watch this, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. It says, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. It goes on, for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. He goes on to then explain how great the love of Jesus, the love of God was. But it says, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. God's love for us is extravagant, unbelievably so. Today, take time. To allow God do what you were created for, which will heal you deeply. Allow him to love you. If you're not sure how, go to how I, uh, how I explained it yesterday. But the general concept is to settle down and allow him. Settle down and remind yourself. Quiet everything around you. Maybe play some instrumental and remind yourself that you are loved unconditionally. That even if you were the only one left on the planet, he still would have died for you. That God sees you as very valuable and extremely important. I'm saying you are closing your eyes. And we normally say close your eyes so that nothing catches your attention. And you are saying, if I was the only one left, he would have come and died for me. Because he considers me extremely important. He, he considers me as important as Jesus himself. I am regarded as extremely and ultimately valuable to God. I am the apple of God's eye. When you take the time to keep doing this, oh my goodness, your subconscious begins to realize we are already okay. We need nothing to make us okay. No matter what's going on around us, we are fine. When your subconscious gets the message from God himself, you are fine. You're already okay. You are not broken. No matter what broke you in the past, you are no longer broken. You are fine. You are acceptable. You are enough. Your world begins to agree with you. Your world begins to give you everything that is enough everything that is not broken, you begin to attract people that are no longer broken, even into your space, because you have transformed from the inside. No wonder the Bible says perfect love. And perfect love means unconditional love. Only God gives that. It says perfect love casts out all fear. Fear is torment. That's what Hebrew says. Perfect love has come. I pray you understand what I'm saying. He says, be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your Father. Today, imitate God. To do that, you need to let him shine his light in you, and his light is his love. I hope you have understood what I've said. What I've said is so simple, but if you will pause and pay attention, you will begin to come up with, genuine ideas you will begin to see your world differently and so a new perspective will come out from you because the the, the more you are healed the more you become a clear representation of god that you were originally created to be because 
unconditional love has healed you, the more you begin to express the true value that has been given to you to express, the less you will begin to feel as though something is missing. You will discover nothing has ever been missing. You only just needed to be healed. I have said what the Lord will have me say. My prayer is that you have heard. My prayer is that you will live it going forward. Let me pray. Everlasting Father, ah, today we receive your love. We accept the fact that we are valuable. We accept the fact that just as we are right now, this exact moment, we are enough. Not enough for that person or that situation. We are enough for God Almighty. Meaning, we are more than enough for any circumstance and any situation. Everlasting Father, this morning, we bask in your love. We bask in your love right now. Thank you, Lord. As they leave to go and face their day, let them be reminded. I speak and declare you will be reminded that his love has already made you worth it. May it change how you work. May it change how you think. May it change how you treat people. May it change how you relate and what you offer to your world. I declare the brokenness gone. I declare the anxiety gone. I declare that perfect love, unconditional love has served your soul. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If this has made sense, if this connected with you, share it with someone. As you expose somebody else to what you have received, it reinforces the conviction in your soul that you valued what you took. And your brain begins to say, this made sense to us. And it holds the thoughts even longer. So sharing it is not just because you want other people and it's a good thing to do. There are, there's a psychological benefit when an impact, when you share something that was valuable to you and you help other people receive it, its value becomes even more rooted in your consciousness. All right? Share this. Tell somebody else. There is freedom, deep freedom for you right now. God bless you, my family. Have an awesome day. For those of you that will be in the master class with me tonight, brace yourself. It's going to be quite interesting. Catch you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Bye for now. <laughs> uh...